there's so much that happens in a man's life, particularly when you're 90 years old, and you've seen so much, good and bad. Good, bad, and ugly, you know. <laughs> and George has seen it all. It's inside of his music. In 1996, George Walker became the first black composer to win the Pulitzer Prize in music. There have been many firsts in George Walker's remarkable life. I think that the, the challenges facing him um, to excel as a composer, you know, growing up in the time that he did as an African American, uh, were really extraordinary. I see him as being active for enough years that he's evolved past a lot of the questions of, you know, can a black man do this? Can a black man do this at the highest levels? He's really in a position to be part of the, the pantheon of great American composers of the late 20th century. George Walker was born in Washington, D.C. in 1922 and began taking piano lessons at the age of five. I had no particular interest in, in, in the piano or in music, uh, but in our, our household, when you were told to do something, you did it, and you, there was never any, any uh, reason for you to think that you could get away with not doing it. <laughs> because <laughs> it would have been catastrophic. <laughs> His father, Dr. George T. Walker, was a prominent physician, in fact, one of Washington, D.C.'s first black doctors. There was a man who, for four or five years, took me to my ten lessons, twice a week, despite his practice, and he would sit in the car uh, until I finished my lessons and wait for me to come out. The moment that I decided uh, where I wanted to go to college, I, I knew that I was going to concentrate on music, and I knew that I wanted to be a concert pianist. And so it, this was in my high school yearbook. Where I, wa I wanted to be a concert pianist. I had no idea of what composition consisted of or, or what it meant. I, uh, I wanted to, to be a concert pianist. I knew that as a classical pianist that a lot of doors you know, were closed to him here in the United States. But after graduating from Oberlin College at 18 and becoming the first black graduate of the famed Curtis Institute of Music, George Walker accomplished his goal. I wanted to play Rachmaninoff III piano concerto. I did it with a Philadelphia orchestra. I wanted to play a New York recital. When I went to the Curtis Institute and I decided to study composition with uh, Rosario Scalero. It was primarily because I had so much energy I'm in, and the idea of, of spending just five hours practicing piano and what else am I going to do? Toward the end of his time at Curtis, Walker composed what became one of his most popular pieces, the lyric for strings. I had actually become acquainted with uh, George Walker's lyric uh, when I was a student at Oberlin, so we shared that. And it was one of those pieces that was sort of in my consciousness, and it was even more beautiful than I had remembered. In the 1960s, George accepted a teaching position at Rutgers University in Newark, and the Walker family moved to Montclair, New Jersey. I grew up uh, falling asleep to the second movement of one of his piano sonatas, uh, and he would use that, I think, to warm up his fingers. It was just absolutely lovely. You know I fell asleep to this pretty much every night of my childhood. Every night what? Of my childhood, I pretty much yes. fell asleep to this. <laughs> Yes. 
Ian Walker is an award-winning playwright and co-founder and playwright in residence at Second Winds Productions in San Francisco. I think one of the most charming things about him, there's a certain um, passion that comes out in very specific ways. Like he's, he loves uh, good food. And he went to, he was invited to the White House one time and uh, he didn't tell me that he'd been there. And that's sort of like my dad, uh, to you know, have something big happen like that and to not bother to, to mention it. And so I heard through my brother that he'd been to the White House three weeks after it passed. And so I asked him, so what was it like? And he said, the strawberries were magnificent. <laughs> Gregory Walker is an accomplished violinist and composer in his own right. In 2009, he premiered his father's violin concerto with the Philadelphia Orchestra. Even though the earlier music he wrote, the lyric for strings, early piano sonatas, they're more accessible, they're more tonal, tuneful, this and that, and the rewards come very quickly to people who hear those just the very first time. But when you've like bled over a piece, the like the second violin sonata, so difficult, so thorny, but you get a personal relationship with it. And by the time you're done with it, you realize you've got this relationship and not everybody else has it. Then that, that's a kind of bond with the music that lasts even longer. And so I would point to some of these lesser known, lesser performed pieces and say, these are favorites. But it's like, I've got it, and I share this with my father. He is quite aware of all the technical difficulties that are involved in my writing for the violin. He's recorded uh, two of my sonatas. And he's the kind of person who will not say, well, Dad, this is too hard, can you change it? <laughs> and for that, I'm most grateful. <laughs> Gregory yeah. has always exhibited a, a very touching kind of understanding of, of my music. One, one thinks in terms of a career, for me, it's a matter of, of being able to do something that one hasn't done before. And to be satisfied that that what one has done is, is something that 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 I can live with, uh, and, and that I understand, even though even if nobody else understands it, the spiritual comes in again in the in, in the piano. For his 90th birthday in 2012, the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, along with the Pittsburgh Symphony and the National Symphony in Washington D.C., commissioned George Walker to write a new piece. And George Walker has had a fairly long relationship with uh, this orchestra. Uh, we premiered a piece of his for the opening of the NJ Pack uh, some, I think, almost like 15 years ago now. And uh, this was a great occasion. He's just about to celebrate his 90th birthday. <laughs> Work with a composer is like working with a soloist, with a musician, and it, it's so great because then I have a colleague with whom I can I can exchange, and, and he can give me his input on how his vision of the piece. I wanted to make this a very serious work. There are quotes from two spirituals. I'm just wondering if America heard "Bomb in Gilead," "Bomb in Gilead," right in the middle of the piece. Oh, that was the spiritual quote. How does that go? There is a bomb in Gilead, there is a bomb in Gilead. But it's broken up between about half a dozen instruments, so you yeah. won't hear it continuously. That's right. Oh, but it's in there. Yes. I thought it was very important that my music should have a certain seriousness about it and there's a certain scope. I simply did not feel that what 
existed as important uh, music on a purely musical level had been created by black composers. I've always thought in terms, uh, in more universal terms, not just what is black or, or what is American, but simply what has quality.